Welcome back to Adobe Live, everyone. I'm Jack, UI UX designer, illustrator, animator, donut connoisseur, and I'll be your host for today's Illustrator Pro Tips. Uh, we're gonna get started working with uh, opacity masks here in Adobe Illustrator. I'm gonna show you different ways you can utilize them. If you're just getting started, I know masking in Illustrator can get complex and uh, a bit confusing. If you're an advanced user, uh, maybe looking to expand your toolkit, I use opacity masks all the time uh, to get softer transition and edges using masks. Before we get into it, don't forget that right after the stream, in about 30 minutes, you can join me in the Illustrator Discord in the Pro Tips After Party voice channel. You can chat with me directly. You can uh, ask questions about anything we go over on the stream, ask me questions about Illustrator, um, chat about opacity masks. Uh, I'll see you over there, hopefully. Okay, so. Today we already have a few things uh, started just so we can focus on masks and different ways to use them. Uh, opacity masks are a different method of masking objects in Illustrator that relies on values, so black, white, gray, etc. You can use them to create, like I said, these kind of like softer transitions or fades. Um, I'm going to start with a really simple way to use an opacity mask that I actually use all the time in my work. It's probably the thing that I use most often. So you probably recognize these little guys from the video thumbnail, these little characters here. Um, I Before I begin, I want to make sure that I've got whatever I want to mask kind of as a group. It's going to make my life easier. So I'm just going to select all these uh, creatures on my artboard and I'm just going to hit Command G to make a group. And now I'm going to go over and you access opacity masks from the uh, transparency panel in Illustrator. If you don't got that open, you can go to Window and Transparency and it'll pop it up for you. So over here, I am going to hit this uh, Make a Mask button. Oh no, I'm, I have to. I almost forgot something. If we do that, we won't actually be able to create that. So I'm going to go to Command C and Command F to make a copy. And then I'm going to go to Object, Transform, and Reflect. I need to make the reflection before I actually go through and do uh, the uh, reflection, right? So I'm going to make a horizontal reflect. And that's going to just kind of make a copy that's upside down. And I'm going to drag down. And I've got Smart Guides turned down, so it's going to help me kind of line them up with the bottom edge there. OK, now I can make a mask. So I am going to click on this Make Mask button. And you're going to think, oh no, I've broken it. Everything's gone. What's happened? Uh, it's fine. Everything's fine. Um, opacity masks are like uh, alpha masks in that anything that's black is going to be hidden, and anything that's white is going to be visible. So black conceals and white reveals, sort of a common saying. Uh, but you could, So you can see over here that I've got this kind of view in my transparency panel, and this shows me the art that I have the mask applied to and the um, mask area or mask preview itself, right? And everything in this kind of mask preview is currently black. So I'm going to click into this masking area here, and that's going to take me into this special kind of view. It's kind of like a weird isolation mode just for making masks. So when I'm in this view, you can see my layers window. All of my other layers are gone because I just have this kind of separate layers panel for my mask objects. And I'm also, um, this area over here is now highlighted. And then when I'm in here, I can't actually interact with my artwork, right? All I, I can only make objects for a mask. This is just for masking. Um, so I am going to start by creating a fill. So I'm just going to grab a rectangle. And I'm going to drag out a fill. And because I've got a white fill on this, um, as I drag it out, it's going to reveal my artwork again. So my artwork is back. Yay, we're not, it's not broken, right? I don't need to stroke on this. So I'm just going to get rid of it. So you can actually use colors in this as well. You can use any of the tools you would normally in Illustrator, uh, but it's only going to affect the mask. So anything that you do in this space is going to change the mask. So if we use color in this, so if I just drag out another shape here, and I make this like a red, um, it's not actually taking into account the color. It's only taking into account the value. So whatever value this color red is, it's going to make that that level of transparency in our mask. So it's only working with black and white and gray. You can work with gray values. And what that's going to do is it's going to add a little bit of transparency. So if we work with like a 50% gray, that's going to make our object like 50% transparent or opaque in our design. Alright, so I'm going to just delete that shape. So uh, to make kind of a reflection of these characters, we've got them copied and flipped it down. I'm going to go over to my gradient panel. 
and I'm going to apply a black to white gradient. So when I do that, you're going to see already it's going to change the way this looks. It's going to add some transparency to it. Uh, a little bit of a pro tip here. Um, I find that sometimes the uh, regular key black or 100% K black doesn't actually give me a uh, true 0% opacity. So what I like to do is just double click on the color stop down here whenever I use a black to white uh, transition in my gradients. And I just like to switch it to this black. And you can see a little bit of a shift when I do that. That changes it to be 100% um, transparent versus being, uh, it's, it's like a not quite there. Okay, so we've got that set up the way that we want it to. We need to change our um, angle of our gradient now. You can see in our preview here or up here in our transparency panel, it's going left to right. And that's not really what we want. We want to go over to our, our um, gradient panel here. I'm going to change this to 90 so that it goes kind of top to bottom. So now you can see that I've got this nice kind of fade off and 100%. But we actually need this to go the opposite way for our reflection. So I'm going to go up here and we're going to tap this button that says reverse gradient and it's going to flip it for us. So that's looking pretty good. Now we've got kind of like this reflected look with the fall off happening here. Um, I'm going to make a couple of tweaks uh, that are just kind of a personal preference. Um, I don't like to have such strong high contrast in my reflection. I like to kind of soften it so that it's not competing with my illustration um, and give it kind of like a more natural look. So I'm going to go into our color stop and where white is, because white is 100% um, visual, 100% opaque, um, I'm going to double click and I'm going to drop this down to something like 30 or 40 probably for my um, grays. So I can just pick from this kind of like gray preloaded gray swatches here. I'm just gonna pick like, uh, we'll go with like 40. And if we pick like 40% gray, that's actually gonna translate to like 70%, 60 or 70, 70% 70 um, transparent. So if we go up to our, it would be the equivalent of changing your opacity to 70%. So like you can kind of start to map like, okay, 50% is going to be 50% transparent, 40% is going to be uh, whatever I said, 70% uh, or something like that. So we can kind of adjust those gray values to get the look that we want. And then for the last kind of thing here, I'm just going to drag up this box, scaling it vertically, and that's going to shorten the fall off on my reflection. So now I've got a reflection that kind of ends, um, you know, naturally um, as it gets farther away from my illustration. And it's not really competing with my illustration. It looks like a very natural kind of reflection on a, on a surface or something. So it kind of helps ground my illustration in the space, right? I feel like these characters are like sitting on a surface without actually adding any fills. However, if we wanted to add fills, we can go um, back up to our uh, transparency panel over here, and currently we're in that ma that mask editing mode. We want to click back over on the left side to get into illustration mode. So when I click on that, immediately all of my layers are back here for my artwork, and I can kind of move things around again if I want to, and I can adjust things, and I can edit my illustrations. Now, um, the mask itself in this case, if we take a look at our layers back stack here, you can see that we've got this layer down here now that's got like that dotted line. Um, that indicates that I've got a mask applied to this shape. Uh, uh, um, let me zoom in here. That dotted line shows me in my layer stack that I've got an opacity mask. Um, it only affects the thing that it is applied to. So in this case, it's applied to a group. So it's affecting everything in that group. Um, it's not going to affect this illustration because this illustration isn't a part of that group, if that makes sense. So you can apply a transparent or an opacity mask to a layer, an object, a group. Um, just keep in mind that whatever you apply it to, like if you apply it to that group, it's not going to affect any other part of the illustration. So now we're back out here and we can actually start to add, let's say we want to make this look like it's sitting on water, right? Uh, so we can start to add some more elements to our background. And because it's a transparency mask or an opacity mask, I don't know why you call it that. Um, we can we can make changes to this um, kind of like on the fly and we can we don't have to worry about going in and making any adjustments to the mask itself we don't have to do any weird things with like color gradient overlays or anything like that um, I'm just gonna put a fill color down here I'm gonna go to object or right click um, arrange and send to back and now you can see that I've got this kind of color back there we can change it to literally any color that we want from you know our colors over here 
Um, if we wanted this to kind of look like it's sitting on like water, like it's ref a reflection over like a lake or something, I can select a fill color here. Um, we'll add it, we'll bring it down into a gradient, remove the black color stop. We'll grab a darker blue. So I've got like some blues, maybe this is like a pond or something. Change the angle to 90 so it's going um, top to bottom. Um, and then one other like thing that I like to do when I'm doing something like a reflection, especially if it's over a colored background like this or like water, is I like to actually select my original uh, mask group and I can use other effects and uh, things on top of this transparency, this opacity mask. So we've got an opacity mask applied. I want to take it a little bit further. I'm going to click on uh, normal in my blending modes and I'm going to drop it down to, in this case, I want it to be like blended so that it's darker over those colors, right? So I can choose a multiply. And now you can see that my, um, my, um, my reflection is sort of like blending in with those colors a bit better than they were before. Um, and it starts to really start, you can start to like experiment with like adding different effects and adding blending modes and um, changing, you know, we could change this background to be a pattern if we wanted to and it wouldn't make a difference. It would behave just the same way, you know, with that reflection coming through if we wanted to do something like that. Okay, so now we've got the basics. Let's take a look at something that's a little bit more complex. So another common case for this is for fading the edges off of an illustration. So let's say we have this really creepy cat illustration this time with these kind of crinkle leaves in the background, very fall. Uh, these leaves are really strong and I want them to sort of fade into the backgrounds, set back from the cat so the cat is our focal point, right? So I'm gonna select my whole group here. Again, my group that I want to mask and my cat are two separate groups so that I can kind of visually identify what I want to mask and, and like make sure that I've got the right thing selected, right? So I'm going to go back over to my transparency window. I'm going to hit make mask. Everything's going to disappear for a moment. It's fine. And we're going to click on that um, mask editing mode over there. And my original shape is a circle. So I'm going to grab instead of a rectangle this time, we'll grab an ellipse. I've got smart guides on, so I'm going to align to the center. Holding down shift and alt will drag out a shape. Because I've already got that blue gradient that I made before, it is having a bit of an effect on that. You can see there's a little bit of a fade, again, taking in the values from the color and making them have transparency. In this case, though, um, I'm going to go to another black to white gradient. So I'm just going to go over here, change it back to that, and make sure that I change it to my rich black. Okay, so looking pretty good, we're getting that effect, but we want it to fit the shape that we've picked. So you can actually use different gradients with um, opacity mask. We can use uh, freeform gradients, or in this case, we can use a radial gradient. So I'm gonna pick a radial gradient. And when I do that, you can see that it ma masks, matches the edge of my shape, which is a circle. The shape's a circle, a radiant, radial gradient is a circle. And now it's fading off those edges. I can scale it in. It's going to tighten that circle. Um, you know, we can we can make some adjustments to our uh, gradient itself. So if we go over here again, I might want to soften this area behind the cat. So we'll pick sort of a darker color here. Um, if we wanted to, we could get a little bit more elaborate with this. I can grab this color stop and pull it in. Let's say that we want to fade off the edges, but we also want to fade off the area behind the cat. Um, I'm just going to add another color stop and we'll make this black again. And now we can kind of play with the position of these. You can kind of see my uh, preview changing there so that we can have a darker area kind of behind the cat and then we can have a darker area at the edges. This is like a really nice way to add some depth to your illustration and to um, be able to have those more like complex elements that um, like fade off and, and, and create more like interesting interactions. So uh, if we go back out again, we can, we have the same kind of setup here, right? If I select this background and I want to change the color, I want to change this to a pattern. Um, I can just literally ch select any one of these and it's going to change. And I don't have to do anything fancy, right? I don't have to, I didn't have to create like a radial gradient of the color and then change the color of the outside gradient. You know, all those hacks that we tend to do when we're trying to do this kind of stuff. Um, 
it really makes it easy for you to make those updates on the fly with your illustrations. Now, I know what you're going to ask, and you may be asking, Jack, what if I have something that doesn't fit into a circle or a linear gradient? I can't use any gradients. I want to ha have this really weird edge, and I want to have it kind of fade off. I've got you covered. So I've got this illustration here, which is a lot more complex. There's a lot going on here. Um, this has got like a really organic edge that I set up originally using a clipping mask. So all I did to create this was I took these elements in the background of my original illustration, you know, these circles here, the clouds, copied and pasted them in front. And then I used Pathfinder Merge to create this shape here for the mask, right? And I just made a clipping mask and this is great and all. But I don't actually want this to have a hard edge. I want this to have a really soft edge for whatever reason, right? So I'm going to take my original clipping mask shape and I'm just going to hit uh, Command C and then I want to paste it in front of my um, clipping group here. I'm just going to drag it out. So now I've got that shape for my mask. And another thing that you can do is if you don't, if, if you're having a hard time visualizing the um, the whole values and darks and lights and you're struggling with uh, seeing the kind of like transparency stuff, you can actually set everything up before you make a mask. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to set this to be white already, right? So we're going to get a white fill to start with. And now, again, I want to select just the objects that I'm working with that I want to mask, right? So I don't want to mask these two birds. I'm not going to touch them. I'm just going to drag and select. So I'm selecting that background and I'm selecting that white fill, right? Now when I go to my transparency mask and I hit make mask, nothing disappeared. It's all visible still because we went ahead and we made that shape beforehand that we wanted to use our mask and then we filled it with that white fill. So we're going to go back into here and you could do this a number of ways, right? You could try to do it with a radial gradient and like try to line things up and you could do it with a freeform gradient and try to add color stops to kind of make it match the shape. But there's a really easy way to add a soft edge on this. It doesn't require any of that. That's going to fit our shape exactly. So you can also use effects and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to use an effect with our uh, mask here. Um, I've got my shape selected. I'm going to go drop down in effects and I'm going to pick stylize and I'm going to pick inner glow. Ooh, and you can see that I've already got this set up. So when you load it, it's going to look like this. I was, I was playing around with it before. So when you load it up, it's going to look something like this. You're going to have screen is the default uh, mode selected for inner glow, opacity, blur. This is what you're going to look like. We want to make sure that when we're doing this, we're going to change that default screen blending mode to normal. That normal is going to give us just the color. It's not going to apply any blending modes. Um, it's set to screen because the effect inner glow is meant to kind of be um, like a glow. So it, the, the lighten blending mode in this case screen, screen is what's selected. But I don't want to lighten in this case. I just want 100% of my color, my value black in this case. So I'm going to pick normal. I'm going to click on the color uh, picker and I'm going to drag to 100% uh, black, rich black in this case, and I'm going to hit OK. And you can already see that we've got a little bit of uh, an edge going on here just from changing that uh, color. And then I want to change, again, the default is set to 75. I want it to be 100%. Type in 100%. And now we've got our edge kind of set up. I'm just going to either tap or type in the value um, to increase the softness on that edge until I'm satisfied with the way that it looks. We can, you know, type something in 100, 200 if you really wanted to go crazy, right? So we've got that kind of set up there. Um, and when we hit OK, this is going to match the edge of our illustration perfectly. If we click back out into the uh, editing, you know, outside of the mask editing mode. Again, we can add a background to this if we want to. Arrange, send it back. You know, picking our color swatches, picking a pattern, whatever you want to do, it's always going to keep that soft edge. Um, so you've got an, a, a whole illustration you want to, instead of trying to like add a feather, different feather effects to all of these individual objects and all of that, you can just use an opacity mask to handle the entire illustration all at once and fade off that edge. Um, now, 
let's say that we have set up our opacity mask and then we realize like, oh, I wanna add another piece to this illustration or I'm not done with it, right? And we wanna make some edits. So you can add or remove things from an opacity mask just kind of looking at our layers panel here, right? Again, we've got that uh, underline there to indicate that we've got an opacity mask on that. So anything that we put inside of that group is gonna be added to the mask. Um, if you put this on a layer, it's gonna affect the whole layer. So I'm gonna zoom in here and we'll say we wanna add some, we'll add like a, we'll do like a little sun or something in the sky, All right? So I'll drag out a sun. Uh, I'm gonna apply a swatch to it. Let's go with yellow. Um, we'll do something like color, double click. We'll do like 25, copy and paste, scale it down, 50, just kind of matching the style of this illustration, right? So now we've got a nice little sun or something. All right, I'm gonna group all of these and I can just take this sun and I wanna add it to my group, I can just drag it in there. Actually, I think that's the robot group. There we go. Name your layers. All right, so I'm gonna drag it into my um, group here that's got that effect applied. And now I've been able to add something to that illustration. You can pull things out as well. Let's say we don't want this in. I'm just gonna dra grab this, pull it out of my group. Now, now that is kind of like not in the group and this is in. So you can make some adjustments to what's inside and outside of the um, clipping or the opacity mask. If you accidentally put those birds in there, you could pull them out um, above the, uh, out of the mask, or whatever, or we could add them in very easily. Just like that. And if you don't like this mask, let's say we don't like this at all, um, and we don't want to use it anymore. All you have to do is go over to our transparency window and hit release. And when you do that, it's going to get rid of our mask. And you can see that all of our work is back to the way it was before. It's a very non-destructive way of working. So you don't have to make any, um, you know, I'm not like cutting things up or anything in my illustration. I'm using the, the values to mask my illustration. Okay, so um, I think we have time for maybe one more thing. And if we don't finish this, uh, be sure to join us in the Discord, the Illustrator Discord after this stream. Um, where we'll kind of wrap it up, whatever we don't finish. So I'm gonna drag out another rectangle this time, and I'm gonna go pretty fast with this one, and we're gonna pick yellow. And we're gonna add something to this illustration. I'm gonna grab uh, a brush here. I've got a sprinkle brush. There we go, pick another color. And I'm just gonna draw out some sprinkles. Oh, I don't think I actually picked it. Hold on. Oh, you know what? I've made a mistake. Did I? No, I didn't. Okay. Oh, I didn't pick a color. There we go. All right, now we can see it. All right, so we'll just add some sprinkles in here. We can add some different colors if we wanted to get fancy with it. So there we go. Whole bunch of sprinkles. All right, so I've got this set up. I'm going to go in and I'm going to select all of this and Command G to group it. And I'm going to make a mask. So now I've made a mask. Everything's hidden again, right? So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna grab my type tool and I'm uh, inside of my mask editing. I'm going to just click and make some type. You can see that because my type is black, nothing is showing up. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna make that a white fill to make it visible. Now when I scale it up, you can already start to see the magic happening, right? We can see the um, design coming through there. I'm going to pick a color that is easier to see or a font that is easier to see. Let's pick something heavy. This is good. And now I can type things out. I can say like donut, scale it up. Um, and the beauty of this, so you, um, you may have done this technique before using a clipping mask, right? Where you type out some text, then you expand the text, you make, um, you go to like, type, um, create outlines, right? And then you have to make that, use, you use that as a clipping mask on your texture, right? But if you use this method, so we're gonna go out, right? And we can like move this around our text, right? Every, it just behaves like it normally would. If we put something behind it, it's gonna be, uh, you know, visible. Um, but 
it keeps our text editable. So if we're not sure what the copy we want to have here is or whatever, we need to make some adjustments. I don't have to make a whole new clipping mask. I don't need to make a whole new, you know, reset the type, re-expand it, remember what font I used and all of that stuff. I can keep it all live by keeping a, using an opacity mask and I can just go in here and I can type out, let's say I want to add party to this. So we've got donut party now. And uh, I don't like the position of it. I can like move my text around and find like a better spa with more sprinkles if I want to for my text. Um, it's a really great way to add some um, texture to your um, letters while keeping the text live instead of making it, um, you know, having to do that whole expand trick. And just like we did before with our effects, we can also add an effect to this and still have the text be live. So we can go up here and we can go to effect. We can go to stylize. We can go to inner glow. And it's got my parameters set up just like I had before, but we'll drop it down to something smaller. And we could use like a center if we wanted to add like a center blur or something to add some depth to our letters. Okay, I think that's going to be it though for now. Um, so be sure to uh, join us in the Discord right after this stream for um, to go over some more techniques. Um, today we went over um, different ways to use opacity masks in uh, Adobe Illustrator for this pro tips. Um, come on over to the Illustrator Discord and continue the party. Again, it's in the pro tips after party voice channel now, as in right now. <laughs> come chat, ask questions, share your work with Opacity Masks, or just say hi. Uh, there's a text chat as well if you don't want to speak out loud. Um, we've also got uh, more live content here on Adobe Live, and I will hopefully see you all in the Discord. So, bye everyone!